Hi, my name is Leon C6. I am here from the New Art Festival, which is in Stavanger, west coast of Norway. And I'm here to talk about um, how we've, through a process of festivals and events and actually paid commissioned work, we've changed uh, the viewpoint of the people of Stavanger towards graffiti. So we started in um, 2006 with the first one. We had about £8,000, I think, and we just spent it on flights and flew in, I think, um, there was GRL from New York. We had D-Face, Nick Walker, a Word to Mother, myself, and it was very homespun. We made a very small show. It was almost like a dry run to see how that process would work as a as an event and actually how artists would react to it. We were a small sister festival with a, a larger uh, music festival called New Music that was very successful, that were sh showing all sorts of musical stuff from Stockhausen to um, Japanese beatbox orchestras. So that had a very high profile in the town and we were able to piggyback on their logistics and their facilitation and the cars to and from the airport and we piggybacked on their budget for quite a while. Um, we really did the first one just to see if we could and uh, everybody enjoyed it so we decided we'd do it again. The next year we... Uh, we had a friend that was working at the local regional art museum and which is quite a big deal within the region. And they were a temporary curator. So we kind of snuck into the roster for the museum and put on a very large kind of blockbuster show in a very traditional museum where we painted straight on the walls, which is very different for a museum because they like to preserve the art. And we just painted on the walls and then whitewashed it over. And when we did this, we found that we'd suddenly become kind of recognised by not only the local commune, the Arts Council, but also the people of Stavanger and the mayor. The mayor opened the show. We had a, they had more visitors through the gallery than they'd ever had before. And we had a very successful show that kind of cemented us in the mindset of the people of Stavanger. So after that, it became easier. Now each festival that we do, we do an open call for walls. So we use the press, Facebook, media, all that type of thing to address the public and ask them if they would like to host one of our artists to paint on their walls. During the first year, we probably got two or three. We had so little walls that we actually went out in the evening and just did illegal works around Stavanger because we didn't actually have the walls for the artists to paint. We had the exhibition space that we always have at Tau Senna Brewery, but we didn't really have the support of the local people. After the museum show, however, that interest in what we were doing was kind of validated on a, on a, on a very a kind of official way. So suddenly more and more people wanted to be involved in us. So we've tried to change the perceptions of uh, people in, in Stavanger, uh, not just the public, but the commissioning bodies, local businesses, um, schools. And with each show, we do a slightly different curation that opens the conversation to include the people of Stavanger. We run conferences with the festival. Uh, which is called New Art Plus, which we've held several times, which m is more of an academic I like look at what's going on within street art. We do a gallery show and we also do a cross-city intervention, if you like, dealing with local um, household owners and businesses. Um, we also do kind of commissions for institutions, We've done schools, we've done air traffic control towers. This year we did a huge boat uh, called the Ocean, Ocean Art. And that was with um, the partners in the boat world that this project was probably cost a million to actually do. We had a hundred, uh, to keep the boat out of the water for three days, 
cost £300,000 just for it not to do anything for us to pay. So when very large business is getting involved and producing these huge, immense structures that are, you know, that are like a moving advert for the artist, the actual people of Stavanger see that integration with not only business but private householders, the airport, stuff like that, and it, it makes them more likely to come forward with walls of their own. Um, the location of the festival is in, a, is in a poorer part of town that is, uh, they call it the ghetto, but it's not really the ghetto, it's Stavanger. But that area is all under re regeneration now. I think the regeneration idea due to street art can't really be proved by new arts involvement in the city. But can, we've produced the festival with the mayor coming to open it when there was a zero tolerance ban of graffiti nationwide in Norway. We were still granted funds, even though the government was saying that there is a zero tolerance to any sort of mark making in the street, and we still got funding, and we still got, um, we were still enabled to do this. Half of this has got to do with Martin Reed, who is actually the founder of the festival and the curator. He's much more the why, and I'm the how. I'm head of production, so I enable things to happen. I help artists. I, you know, liaise with production staff to actually produce the festival, but Martin always uses the curation to open the conversation up, to actually make people think of street art in lots of different ways, it, to, you know, to name some of the more unusual street artists we've had. We've had um, Brad Downey, you know, was a very different street artist, not a muralist of that sort of thing. Over the years, we've actually left uh, a massive street museum in the town and I think that this because they're such large well-produced artworks I think this helps change public perception in some way because in each locality the people take ownership of those works and they're they're they're, they're proud of them there's, there's we do a street art tour where we've had up, up to about 400, 500 people actually following someone that tells you something about all the different works. We also do a outreach to schools and two years ago we were the one show that every school kid in Rogaland, which is the larger area, which is the county, ours was the show that they had to come and see. So obviously that has a knock-on effect in people's homes. The kids come home and they said, oh, we went to see this great show in Stavanger and, you know, there was all this graffiti and painting and, and the, you know, this takes our, you know, press doesn't always work, but actually when it's experienced by people, people talk about it and I think it's the best press that you can have is actually, you know, people's direct experience of either working with an artist or watching the artist paint or experiencing it in their street. We also do an app that shows you, you can walk around the town and it'll actually tell you a bit about the artist, where they come from, when it was produced. So we're very conscious of our community within Stavanger um, and we are very keen on interacting with that community and making it something that is necessary for them. And I think we've done that in Stavanger. Um, we've also had shows where we just didn't do any gallery show. One year in um, 2011, we just had the Landmark series, which were my monumental works, large works, big mural works, which we don't always do. But when we dropped the gallery side of the show, the people hated it. They really wanted that place that they could go and revisit that... Um, almost installation-based work that we facilitate so well at New Art. But the festival's been going on for, you know, we're in dis discussions with taking this to several different countries at the moment. It seems to be working, we won't franchise it, but I mean, it seems to be working as a model for, for the change of perception towards an artwork. And I think, uh, you know, it's a strong festival and long may it continue to be so. So when we first started, um, when we first started doing these call for walls to the public, we hadn't really thought through the whole process. So uh, somebody in a local area can give you the uh, 
permission to paint their wall, but that actually sometimes falls into a larger remit of does everybody else around it want to actually look at this picture? So in the beginning days, because we were getting places that were quite on the outside of town, this didn't really, it was a very long learning process for us because we started doing these little hideaway places and old silos and boat houses that were, it did make the area look significantly better than it did before we went there. So with the success of the museum shows and the general acceptance of our stuff, we started doing more and more central like locations. One, the permissions were much harder to get. Also, suddenly we had to think about public thoroughfare, health and so lots of health and safety issues with all of this stuff, um, cherry picker licenses, parking, and also after the fact of painting in a historic area in the centre of town, we suddenly realised that actually lots of people thought that what we did wasn't enhancing the area at all. Uh, one particular example of David jo Cho drawing very large horses with very large cocks draw, drew a lot of negative kind of reactions from the neighbours that were actually having to experience this work. So we ended up being actually outed in the press saying that we destroyed a historic part of the town by a right-wing um, politician within Stavanger. And there's always this right-left jockeying thing with new art, where the left lovers, the right don't like us, they try and make us, they try and paint negative pictures about what we're doing, and then they're kind of, the general consensus in Stavanger is against those views. So even though the historic, the historic society were actually asked to, you know, the indignant politician turned around to the historic society and said, but look, look, they've totally destroyed this place in a really beautiful, picturesque part of a fishing town on the west coast of Norway. And the historic society said, well, if they'd asked us, we would have let them anyway. So that kind of took his, his thunder away from him. But, it, and I think, because we've always done this, and it's kind of grown exponentially, I don't think we, we face a lot of adversity in such a small place with such a small community, because it is generally welcomed with open arms. I imagine in a larger, more homogenous, like bigger city, it would be a lot harder to get away with and to actually develop the idea that we've developed for Stavanger. Um, certainly in London, you, it's, you would have to be very careful about the place where you chose or Paris or places like this. I mean, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but because it's been such a gradual PR exercise with the people of Stavanger and they can actually see that they gain something through these, you know, very often beautiful uh, murals, that somehow we a lot of the kind of legalese that a lot of people get caught up in in trying to organise one of these festivals is actually ignored by everybody involved, including the council, the police. Um, everybody seems to turn a blind eye towards us. Now, I don't know whether that's Norwegian or Stavangen, but, you know, it's, it's, I think we've grown with the city over the last... We did European capital culture there, and, you know, we've actually worked with the city in such a way that now they're starting to believe that we're bringing tourists there. And that's really good for the city. That's what they think. So I think we've actually got away with quite a lot more than most people can get away with in a lot of different circumstances in a lot of different cities around the world. I think see no evil is really good. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a, it's a, I think we need to see more grassroots Grassroots promotion, grass, grassroots graffiti festivals. I mean, graffiti festivals are grassroots produced. They, they come from the passion of the people that are involved in it. Um, and I think, there's, I think there's a lot of money that's spent on very ineffective graffiti, you know, uh, graffiti exhibitions or or councils trying to engage with young graffiti artists and stuff like that. And really the money should be going to people like Tom Bingle, 
see no evil, inky, you know, that whole Bristol thing. Because actually you've got the people that care about it and that actually have the sensibilities of the artists that are actually producing a festival for the artists as well as the public. So I think that type of, I know Martin Reed's an artist, I'm myself an artist, we, we, we create a festival that's fun for the artists, fun for the people that come, fun for the town that is hosted. And I think there's a really good feel factor behind that financial backing. I mean, we get our backing from several different, we get money from the, cult, from the actual council, we get money from um, Kulturad, which is like the culture department, we get, um, we get some uh, private funding from Skagen Funds, which is a, a hedge fund management with an ethical um, viewpoint in Scandinavia. And they they fund us. Um, so we've, and also we do these large kind of commissions where we're painting huge, like 120 meter boats and air traffic control towers and schools and science museums. And this obviously gets an element of funding into the organisation. I mean, now the, uh, the music festival that we used to piggyback on is actually, we are the bigger festival than the music festival. So now, to be honest, they borrow our cars, they use our infrastructure. They, you know, now the tables have turned a bit. So, you know, it's, it's, it's we used to use new music as a funding stream or at least a facilitation stream and now that that facilitation stream is, is going back towards the music festival that used to help us we approached the educational department i believe for that we had a uh, one of our um, production staff a girl, a girl called susella was actually running the show and the maintaining of the uh, of the show during the month while the while the festival is open to the public the actual closed door gallery show and she had she was already the liaison for the venue which is an, a, a really old uh, brewery much like the truman brewery in london uh, that actually martin reed helped open and turn from a derelict building into an art space he's quite a driving force in stavanger and um she she'd already been working with Tau Center and working with schools, so we actually approached the schools and offered the show. And because it has a young vibe and a you know some of these kids are already painting, so it has actually a relevancy to them as an art form. They agreed that we could uh, we could have that, and there is actually a, a you know a, a, a financial incentive for the gallery that's the, the show that's chosen to actually be part of this system and we do an outreach we actually talk we do a presentation within the space each school sees we made a movie called uh, eloquent vandals which explains some of the processes behind the uh, behind the actual festival we've also brought out a book so go buy it so it's your store now <laughs>